Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner and welcome back to Mr. Lehner's Math Extravaganza. In today's webisode, we're going to take a look at getting close and estimating sums. Now, what are we talking about in math when we're talking about getting close? We're talking about using some of these estimation skills that can help you uh, in real life situations. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into this bad boy. Let's take a look at our problem up here. It says write the following benchmark fractions as a decimal and a percent. Then place them on a number line. We have a half, one third, one fourth, and two thirds. Now, the first thing I need to think about when I'm looking at this problem is, well, benchmark fractions, what are those? Oh yeah, they're common fractions that we see every day. One half, one third, one fourth, and two thirds are common fractions that we might use from time to time throughout our lives, and we call these benchmark or common fractions. Well, let's tackle the uh, first portion of our problem up here. I gotta turn each one of these into a decimal and percent. Again, if you're using a calculator at home, that's fine. That's a handy tool to help you out with some of these problems. Well, one half's kind of common though, so I kind of know half means 50% or 0 0.5. Um, you might also have 0 0.50, but I know my place value that the five is in the tenths place, so that stands for 0 0.5 um, or 50 tenths or 50%. If I look at a third, a third is 0 0.33, and then it has the repeater going through if you type it into a calculator, but it's commonly known as 33.3%. Uh, our third one here, 1 fourth, 1 fourth is 0 0.25 uh, or 25%. Again, if I was reading my decimal on here, this would be 25 hundredths or 25 out of 100. And lastly, 2 thirds. 2 thirds would be 0 0.66, and you see the repeater 666667 um, throughout. We commonly know 2 thirds is 66.6%. And we kind of round it up there at the end. Second portion then asks us to put these on a number line. It's just a different way to think of the information. It helps us kind of compare uh, these benchmark fractions. If I have a handy dandy little number line up here and I decided to place these fractions on the number line, I made them nice and tiny and small down here for you to see. I know that these are all positive numbers here, or fractions I should say, and I have to place them between one and zero because they're all less than one. Well, if a half means half of one, well, I need to find the spot that's halfway between zero and one, so a half's gonna go in the middle between zero and one. I then look at one third. Hmm, 33%, one third, how do I figure that one out? Oh yeah, well, three thirds would be a whole, so I could do one third, two thirds, three thirds would be a whole, so I could break it up into three equal parts, so one third would fall right about here. Then I look at one fourth. I know one fourth is 25%. I know that four fourths would be a whole right there. So this could be one fourth. Two fourths is the same thing as a half. Three fourths would be about there. Four fourths would be there. So one fourth would fall here on my number line. And then lastly, two thirds. Well, it's kind of handy because we've already done one third here. If this is one third there, there is about two thirds three-thirds would be my whole. I'm breaking up my whole here into three equal parts. Now you may have noticed something on the board up here. When you start to compare these benchmark fractions, just by looking at the fractions, it might be difficult to figure out what's more, what's less, where would I place them on a number line, but what I like to do with my little helper here is I like to look at the percents. If I know that 66% is two-thirds, well, 66% is higher than 50%, 33.3% and 25%. So I know that this percent is the highest, that must mean this fraction is the biggest. Or if I look at 25%, I must know that one fourth is the smallest. I always think of like, you're sharing something with four people. You look at your denominator there. And then you have 33%, that's the next lowest. Uh, and then the middle one there is 50%. So again, you might look at changing your fraction to a decimal or percent to help you kind of compare these different benchmark fractions and it might make it a little bit easier for you too when working with these, because I know fractions, decimals, and percents are sixth graders' biggest fear in math, right? No, they're not that bad. They're easy, right? We just gotta keep working with them. Well, we're in luck. I'm glad you think that these are easy when you're working with them, because now it's the favorite portion of the video. It's gonna be your turn up here. It says write the following benchmark fractions as a decimal and a percent. 
then place them on a number line. The fractions I want you to work with are 3 fourths, 1 sixth, 1 fifth, and 1 eighth. Make sure you get the pencil out, grab that paper, go ahead and pause this video and we'll see what you come up with. Okay, when looking at these fractions, these are again some common fractions that you might see uh, or work with in everyday situations. We're going to turn them first into a decimal and percent. I know that 3 fourths is going to be 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths, which is 75 percent. I know that 1 sixth, if I calculate it out, is 0 0.166. A common error that some students will make is you're going to want to tell me that it's 166 percent. Well, if I know that 6 out of 6 on a test is 100 percent, and I get one right out of six questions, does it make sense to say I got 166 percent? No. So this stands for 166 thousandths. So if I was looking at this as a fraction, it would be 166 over 1,000. If I turn that into a percent, it is 16.6 percent, which makes a little bit more sense. If you took a test and got one question right out of six, your percent would be 16.6. Hopefully it doesn't happen to us. Um, but that's what you would get for 1 sixth. Let's take a look at 1 fifth. I know that if I have one fifth, well, again, I like to think of test questions sometimes. If I get one right out of five, it's going to be 0 0.2, which is 20 tenths, or 20%. Some days you might say the school week usually is five days, right? Well, after Monday, I might ask you, well, one fifth of the school week's done, what percent's done? Well, 20% of the work week is over for you, which means there's, yeah, unfortunately, 80%. But that's all right. School's fun. We're good with that. And lastly, 1 eighth. Again, 0.125. Don't tell me you scored 125% in your test if you got one right out of eight. If you have one out of eight, it's 0 0.125, which is 125 thousandths, which equals 12.5%. So we've just taken our fractions, and we've turned them into decimals and percents. Yeah, the best part of this one. Let's find out where to place these guys on our number line. All right, we have our number line that kind of pops up here. And let's take a look. I'm going to start with 3 fourths. Again, I know 4 fourths is a whole, so I'm going to break this up into four equal parts. So 1 fourth would be about there. 2 fourths would be half. 3 fourths would be halfway between a half and a whole. So 3 fourths would fall about there on my number line. 1 sixth is 16.6%. I'd also have to break this up into six equal parts so I might place 1 6 right about there, um, a little bit farther off of 0. When looking at fifths, I need to break it up into 5 equal parts. So 1 fifth might fall here. Again, I know that 5 fifths would be a whole, and I can make 5 equal lines, or as close to possible um, as I can. And then lastly, 1 eighth is 12.5%. So I would place 1 eighth right about here. I can break this up into 8 excuse me, eight equal parts. Now again, for me, when I work with this, I like to look at the percents, because for me, it makes it easier to see. Oh yeah, 12.5, that's the lowest percent, so one eighth is gonna be lower than one sixth and one fifth. If I have to place them on a number line, or I'm kinda using some of these benchmark fractions, I can see very easily one eighth is less than uh, one sixth because it's closer to zero. Or I could say that one fifth is more than one sixth because it's closer to a half or closer to a whole. So once you take that information and kind of plug it in visually with a number line here or look at your percents, it makes it a little bit easier to work with these fractions uh, as you're moving forward. Thank you for tuning in to Miss Elaine's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.